I'm going to do a project which is to uh, well first of all go and wet my solder sponge my solder iron sponge so I'll do that and come back all right that's the solder iron sponge wet dries out quite quick in this room because it's quite warm in here usually um, because I've got a computer running in here all the time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run, right, uh, create a new uh, little project, which is actually going to be to use a um, ESP to monitor the temperature in in my lounge, so that that can actually um, report back to a uh, home assistant, uh, which would then allow me to use it as a thermostat to turn my heating on and off. Um, Right, so but the most thing, the main thing is, is uh, this ESP has got a, a voltage regulator on the back, and so you can plug um, five volts from a USB plug straight into the bottom of it. Now I don't want to use this one. I actually want to use where's he gone? Oh, let me put it away. There it is. I just want to use this one, which is um, exact same thing on a little board. But with no voltage regulator, so this needs 3.3 .3 volts instead of the 5. So I've got a bunch of these little regulators, which is actually the same one that's on the bottom of there, um, and have it separate. The reason I want to do that is another reason is that I actually just want to use a power supply like this one um, with not a USB plug on the end of it. So, because I thought you know these are cheaper to buy, um, and I can just use, obviously not with that big block on the end, but I can um, put a plug on that and uh, power the the whole thing from this, rather than having to use the USB type charger um, sockets. So that's what we're going to try and do. So the first thing we need to do is actually work out where we want to put things. Now, I'm not the best at doing this. I do work through it and get there in the end. So I've got a load of these little fan headers, which um, I've been using for the uh, temperature sensors to plug into, and uh, they work out quite well because obviously once you've got the the, the resistor in for the Dallas um, temperature sensor, you can just put a whole bunch of these in in a row, and uh, you can still monitor the temperature on all of them. So I'm going to do something similar to that. Uh, with these little header header plugs, but what I'm going to do is actually use one of these also for uh, the power. Um, so everything's like kind of modular on it. So that's what I'm going to start doing. I'm going to start uh, just building it all up. Okay, that's three of them off. Um, that'll do for now. Uh, I used blue tack to actually hold them steady while I did it, and then the first one I tried to pull out, but then in the end I actually used my pliers to pull out the second two. They actually come out quite easily. So we can get rid of that now. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is actually solder one of these in as this will be the supply into the actual whole circuit. Um, now if I get that to stay out like that, which it will, I'll solder this one in. One, two, three. Now, that'll be the 5 volts coming in. So, we're going to want to take, if we put that in there like that, um, we can use one pin, this edge pin, as the 5 volts, which goes into V in on the little regulator, and then the next pin's V out, and then the end one's ground. So, I can join one of the other pins to the ground and then just use the same ground and the V out to supply the power to the to the little ESP chip. Now I'm gonna make sure that I can actually get the where is it? This one. Actually get one of these plugs in and still get that in there quite comfortably because I don't want to put it too close and then not be able to get the plug in. So that can sit like that. Now obviously these the colour of these 
wires can be changed around because I can get those pins out. So if I stick that there, yep, that should do it quite well. So what we'll do is we'll take that back off, get that soldered in. And the legs on this little regulator are quite long, so I might end up chopping them off once it's in place. That's one. That's two. That's three. So that's not too bad. So we can still get the plug back in. Should be able to. Yeah, that's okay. Now then, um, what we want to do is we've got ground there, so the easiest way to get that ground over to there would be to put a little jumper wire in. So we can do that. Um, there's a bit of this cable. Chop a bit of that off. That's one end. I actually put it on the top so it actually keeps it neat. So you want the outer pin of that one. Bend him over. That'll do fine. And then take that over to what it could be either be the middle one or the other end now. All of these pins are going to be in the order now on here, so um, it doesn't really matter where I go. I'll probably go to the far end, um, just so that the wire's a little bit longer, so it's easy to strip the strip the wire back. So if I cut that back there, I can proper fiddly try and get these wire strippers in there now, but that'll be fine. As I thought it might happen pulled off the whole thing. So we'll just leave it like that. <laughs> it won't matter. If I just squeeze those wire strippers a bit tighter it probably would have worked okay. But let's get that down there. Get it bent about there and through. Right, not quite to give that a few more twists so it's nice and tightly twisted. It wasn't going through the hole. There we go, that's a bit better. To give that a good stretch. And then so as soon as I've squeezed that that's kind of sprayed out the ends again slightly but should be alright this time. To be honest, I could do with my tweezers. Oops, just drop the board nearly. This is when you actually need single core cable instead of this stuff I'm using. Um, probably have to invest in some at some point. It's always good to use other stuff that you've got laying around, I guess. Yeah, that's not really going to go in there, is it, in a hurry? So. I'll get that done off camera because it's going to take me probably another couple of attempts to get it in there. Unless I solder the end and push it through. Um, yeah, let's just put a little bit of solder right on the end. It doesn't come undone. There we go. Yeah, that was good. Let's try this again. Grab all of him. Put it down there. All right, it shouldn't come undone this time. Yeah, there we go, that's much better. Push it through. Where are my tweezers? That's what I want to know. Gonna pull. There we go, that's much better. That's nice and neat on that top side as well. Not that anyone sees this once it's all done. It'll be all hidden away. Go, right, so it's the outer two. It's going to be um, ground and 
live. So we want to change these pins around. Now, the way we can do this, so with a little screwdriver, probably smaller than this one, but this one will do for now. Let's see. Push down the... Yeah, they're going down. If you push those down, they should all just nearly fall out. There we go. One. Another one I didn't quite get. A bit better push. There we go. And then the last one, which I won't bother putting back in, so I don't need the centre pin. Now, they pretty much just will go back in, but to get them to stay back in, I need to push the little springy bit back out. So that's the red one. Done. And we're going to put that in there. Yep, that's correct. So that one's locked in there quite tight, so that won't be coming out again. In fact, the black one will probably be alright anyway. Yeah, that locked in. I actually heard it click. So now, push that on there. Got the red going to the uh, V in on the regulator, and the black going across to the ground. So we can use either the ground that's actually on the regulator to to go to this uh, ESP chip, or the actual ground straight across. Um, obviously, when I'm putting this in here. I'm probably going to put it there. Obviously, not straight in. I'm actually going to use the pin headers. Um, and then cut the tracks so everything's safe. And then uh, just use the ground coming up this way and across to, to the ground on the uh, ESP chip. So I'll get the um, pin header soldered in next. Because then I can work on getting all the cables sorted. It looks like the memory card filled up on my uh, uh, mic during that last recording, so part of that will actually be from the from the camera and not from the mic. So uh, I noticed it when I paused it. Then um, teaches me to not delete files after I've copied them off and onto my computer, I suppose. So we'll start with these headers, and I'll take off those there. I'll take off these. Out there, That'll do the job. Obviously, you lose one socket every time you do it. But um, there you go. So we'll get this in the right way around now. I won't actually use that ground, which is what I was thinking of not doing anyway. Actually, that looks a bit close to that. Oh, that'd be all right. It can't go anywhere once it's soldered in anyway. If we put that VCC on the V out of the regulator and still leave at least one hole that I can cut the tracks. So what I'll do is I'll actually cut the track first if I can find my track cutter. So the one I want to cut is actually the ground, which is the top one, obviously, it's this one here, because um, we really don't want that ground going anywhere near that GPI pin, there's absolutely no need for that, and that would cause problems. So we can balance that on top of the whole thing. Obviously I'm going to need to cut the tracks between the two rows of pins. Um, but I'll do that once I've actually soldered a couple of these in, at least a couple anyway. Get the two corners like that. And what I'll do is get all these soldered with that actually unplugged. Now we'll, get, we'll leave that in there because it's still a bit wobbly. Obviously three solder joints <laughs> probably isn't enough to hold it still. So it should come out now. And it's still very stiff. It's moving quite a bit. Oh, there, we go. there it comes. There we go. All right. So I don't want to put too much heat into that. So um, it'll probably be okay, but rather I didn't do it. There's no need to leave it in any anywhere at the moment. 
So we get all these done. To one side and this side. So this is actually one of the first videos that I've recorded with the new light. So hopefully the picture quality and at least the colours should be a lot nicer now than the uh, the light I was using because it was just a little uh, desk lamp, LED desk lamp. So that's pretty good. Now I need to bring the earth across so this time let's do this again. Actually might actually leave the earth plastic actually on the um, <laughs> cable this time. So we get that in there like that. Probably going to come off again anyway. Yeah, it's probably best that I did. Let's just pull it off. There we go. Who cares? I'm going to get some uh, single core cable. I think if I'm carrying on doing this sort of stuff, probably best. Just checking my mic's actually recording this time. It's uh, rather not use the mic in the camera. So if I cut that. There, and just twist those together again a bit more, and just solder the ends. Slightly. Throw my tools around everywhere. I want it bent about there. That'll do. It's not perfect. I mean, it's not perfect because I've got the plastic on the cable still, but it really doesn't matter. Not for this. It's, it's fine. Get that soldered. So we have the earth coming in, um, which goes to the regulator. Uh, live coming in and then out to VCC on here and then also the ground earth coming in onto the ground pin of the actual ESP there. So that should power it. Now I've actually got this which I was using the other day so I can actually try this out right away. Might as well get these two cables a similar length. I mean, I'm going to end up putting this in a little box anyway, so it will actually end up being um, another socket. So it's all going to be sort of modular, modular, but then use another socket on the outside anyway, so it doesn't really matter so much. I just like using these little fan headers, really. Alright, so we get the two wires in. And the next thing, obviously, is the mic run out of space. I wonder if my camera's going to run out of space next. Most probably. All right, so there's that. Obviously, red to red. Now, I'm going to plug this in. And if it doesn't go bang, it should at least come on and do something. Or maybe nothing. So maybe this doesn't do anything when I turn it on. So let's actually get one that does do something. Make sure there's nothing on the board. Take that one out. I'll get that other one, which I know does do something. So I might not have programmed that with anything. So let's unplug the power. Get that one in there. Nope, still nothing. Sure, the LED should do at least 
We need to do something. Well, we must be getting power here. All right, so multimeter timer. Let's have a look. Stuff out of the way. What have we got going on? So obviously if it's not programmed to do anything that's going to flash the LED, then you wouldn't see it anyway. So, mm. so we've got that one there, that one there. We have that thing. Huh. That's a good point. Should actually be getting an LED lighting up on the regulator. So either the regulator's dead or this transformer's dead. That doesn't look like five volts in anyone's book. Right, so it's obviously something could be pulling that voltage down, which would be the regulator if it's a bit naked. Let's see what happens now. Hmm. So something's not right. V in ground. Nothing shorting out. Oh, so is look at that. Mm. How silly can that be? What did I do? I didn't cut the tracks between there and there. So that one. That one, that one, that one, get it right through. There we go. So, if this is all still living, that would be quite good. No magic smoke though, so uh, still, still try and get magic smoke out of some things, but not this. <sighs> right mess of my desk now, and now I made the right mess of the floor. <laughs> there we go. Something to tidy up. All right. Let's have a go. Put just one back in here. So the first thing is we should actually get that LED coming on on the regulator at least. Yeah, there we go. So at least the regulator's still alive. But then I guess it would be it was just shorted out, short out the power, didn't it? So. To it rather than putting it in the wrong way or anything. So we'll plug that in. Yeah, look, now you've got the blue light. So that's all good. So there you go. Definitely cut the tracks, obviously, because the bottom two is VCC and ground. In fact, that's actually got the flash, flash LED uh, sample code on it. So the next thing to do is to get some more of these little headers on to plug in the um, temperature sensors. Okay, so I've worked out where to put the, the pin headers. Obviously, once that board is in, it overhangs the um, that little header there quite a bit. So I was actually going to stick it in there and stick the next one a bit further up. So uh, that's where we'll put that. But if I push that in, move the breadboard out of the way. I was just going. I was actually going to look at doing some stuff with the breadboard first. But to be honest, we can do it without that. I'll just quickly burn my fingers completely off. Solder one pin at least. Yeah, that's quite warm. There we go. One pin's done. It keeps it in there. And then two and three. Now the temperature sensors I'm gonna be using are the uh, DS eighteen B. Um, sensors so that you you actually can put them in a string as long as you've got one resistor between two of the pins um, you can have many of them on one uh, one run if you like so uh, I'm going to have at least two on this one I'm also going to have a um, moisture sensor on this on this board because of where it's going to be in the lounge uh, I want to monitor the moisture in one of the um, in the plants, so I'm going to add that to this project board as well at some point. 
if we just get the uh, temperature sensors on there for now, that can at least control the thermostat circuit that I've got set up, and uh, which is connected to the boiler now. So the resistor I'm going to use, and you can see I've used quite a few of these already, is a 4K3, um, and that goes between. This is another board I made, um, doing a similar thing, um, but doing quite a lot of other things. I don't know what I had going on there. To be honest, I think I think this one might have been the supply input, and then I definitely had one of these Dallas sensors on there, but I'm not sure what the end one was. Might have been actually two of them. That might have been supply. In fact, this might actually be exact copy of this, but for this. ESP instead because then you don't need the regulator on it. In fact that could well be what that was. It looks like it. It's just there's a cut track there which is strange so I don't think it was. I think that was something else. A third thing so it might have been that might have been for the um, moisture sensor but the thing is the moisture sensor I wanted to use analog and not digital so I don't know why that was on digital GPIO what was it 16 up that end so it might have been using a digital um, output of the moisture sensor, so I don't really want to use that, but I'll probably come in handy at some point. So I'm going to use this resistor, um, and it goes between the well, any two pins to be honest, because I'm going to obviously put the put the plugs in for the temperature sensors anyway. So as long as I put it between two pins, it doesn't matter which two it is. So we'll put those two there, just because they're there. Um, put that one down that way. Cut this one off. Get that soldered in. And then, uh, just need to run a wire from the um, GPIO pin which I'm going to use and obviously live and ground and that should be it it should be actually done then and just just a case of programming the actual ESP so um don't actually match which way around it goes as long as I get the pins right on the on the headers in the end so which I can sort that out afterwards what we'll do I'm going to use a bit of this yellow which is what I cut off from the plug just now. Oh, it looks like the uh, memory card is full in the mic again. So I'm going to sort that out <laughs> and uh, come back. Right, so this time I've actually deleted every file off of the mic so that it's not going to run out of space for a while. Um, and while I was waiting for that to happen, because I actually copied all the files off it before I did it. Um, I actually finished doing the wiring on here so now what's left is to actually get the little temperature sensors and to program the ESP to actually read the sensor, uh, temperatures from them and do something with it which is actually going to send it by, by um, MQTT to a uh, home assistant to switch the boiler on and off depending on what temperature it is and depending on what temperature I've set as the thermostat uh, level so that's what we'll be doing next. So I got this uh, circuit finished and um, soldered up the DS uh, temperature sensor onto a few wires, very very close, but it didn't really matter because I was just testing it, and it didn't actually work. Um, and it was actually because the the signal wire that I was using was actually from from the sensor was actually going to uh, GPIO 16 on the ESP, and it's, it turns out that that's actually used to reset the ESP so um, I'm going to have to change where that wire goes instead of going down to, to that pin there I need to bring it over to well, I'm going to move it to GPO 4 which isn't used for anything else on here so that'll be the one two three four so it's the fourth one down so it's just actually the same place just on the fourth pin down on this side instead so I'm going to cut this wire out and uh, just do the same thing but on the other side if you like Cut that side. That in there. Cut that side out. Just do exactly the same. But, um, 
as I say, I went to pin 4, well, GPIO 4, instead of GPIO 16. I'll just strip a bit more than that. There we go. Actually, I'll still put that in the same pin there. What we'll do is I'll put it close to that other header because I can put extra headers on there if I need to. So remember that if you're going to be doing this, GPO 16 is actually used on this board at least um, for reset, which uh, had me puzzled for a little while. But after a little bit of googling, certainly found out what the problem was. All right, so I'll just solder this cable in there. Should be good. Say pin four this time or GPIO four. As long as I haven't taken that too close, but it doesn't matter, I'll just go sideways with it a little bit. So cut off down here somewhere. There we go. Right, so where do we want right? We want that about there. So that's good. I've actually adjusted the uh, <laughs> wire strippers now as well so it actually cuts through all of the, the plastic so it actually actually uh, doesn't pull it off completely like it did for the others on this board it does sometimes strip some of the wires away as well but it's a data anyway so it's not carrying any current as such so I'll just pop that through I'll actually tin the end of that So it can go through and not snag up every time. And that should go in to there. It's not straight, but if I'd gone straight, it would probably come through where I've cut the, cut the track, so three down from there. No, we could go down there. Let's do it. Let's do it straight. Let's not cut through it. There we go. Um, should be. And that's pin three. Pin four. Let's have a look on the other side. Yeah, that's okay. That's not actually one of cut the track on. So we can solder that there. And as I say, hopefully this will be the solution. So it's actually the same pin but on the other side. So GPIO four on that side. So I just need to update the the sketch and um, to talk to pin or GPIO 4 instead of 16 and uh, hopefully that will solve the problem we shall see well there you go it's a uh, it's actually working um, the LED actually flashes um, every time it sends an MQTT update uh, so it's flashing once a second at the moment obviously I'm not going to keep it at that speed because uh, uh, Home Assistant doesn't really need it that often, um, so I'm going to change it to once every uh, once every minute, and then re-upload the the code again. Um, but yeah, that's what it was. It was the uh, the GPO uh, 16. It didn't like that, so now it's on GPO 4. It's working fine, and um, it's actually sending the MQTT traffic now, and it's actually 26. Point one degrees which is quite warm in here but it is quite warm in this room because of the computer that I've got on in here so uh, in fact if I put my fingers over that it's 26.4 28.7 29.8 so yeah it's definitely going up if I take my fingers off again should start to drop them down again yeah 29 and it did actually go up to 30 so it's, it's slowly coming back down again. Yeah, 28 again. So there we go. It's uh, working pretty well.